So I, I'm Chris from MetaMythic. This is Lisa from Arizona Public Service. Lisa and I have been working together for about two, three years mm -hmm. on an initiative that is really near and dear to our hearts, and at this point, really near and dear to the hearts of several thousand people, people. in the industry. And, and we want to tell you the story, uh, this story, and we also want to uh, encourage you to join the rebellion. But before I talk about what the rebellion is, uh, I, I want to talk about this conference, because this conference has been uh, we, were, we went out to dinner last night, and we were talking about how energizing this conference Incredibly is. Incredibly energizing. Yeah. So many new ideas, actually, this time. Right. I mean, I feel like I, I, I walked in with this energy level, and I'm leaving with an energy level up here. Every person I sit down and talk to is a, a thinker or somebody putting new things into practice. And I think that really, that's a, a, a really a core thread of, of S4, is that we are, we are systems people, and we are building amazing systems. We've got better tools. I mean, we can, we can counter drone threats at this point. We've got better technology. We've gone through that decade of, of kind of the lost decade that we've heard several right. speakers talk about, and things are accelerating. And we have better algorithms. I mean, machine learning, was that not an interesting presentation earlier today? And so uh, with, with all of these things, there's, there's this thread. But when, when we were talking last night, Lisa brought up something to me of another thread that she feels is happening at this conference. And, and when she presented it to me, I thought, you know, I, I think you're right. And it's, it's almost a subversive thread. It's, it's something that's a little uncomfortable because it feels like there's a change, a new way of thinking that's coming. And I think Dale Peterson maybe kicked it off when he used the word connect. And, and he talked about connecting OT and IT, but then he also started talking about some new ideas, connecting operations people with the board. Uh, because you know what, people are interested in the work that we are doing as security professionals. There's that new awareness, and so we've got to learn a new language. How do you teach technical things to board members? How do you have that dialogue with them? It, it requires empathy. But then further, there's that connection with other groups. And that one's more of a, a humility connection, right? Because we're not going to those other groups, whether it's clinical psychologists or these different, these different speakers that are bringing new ideas in from outside disciplines. We're not going to them and saying, hey, here's what we want you to know. We're actually going to them and saying, hey, what can you teach us? And so this connection thread is really interesting. And I think we're going to ride that thread a little bit with this presentation. Absolutely. Because there's another group of people that I don't know that we've really connected with. And we want to point point that out. Because when we talk about our systems, there's a part of the system. So I've, I've run EMS teams, and operations technology departments. And one of the things my operators have always taught me is that the control system is an extension of them. It's an extension of their body. It's their, their hands, their eyes, their ears out in the field. They can reach 100 feet away or 100 miles away and control something. And so when you think about systems that way, you realize that humans are really part of the system. They're not divorced from the system. They're a part of it. And so we have to ask the question, when we're advancing all of our technology and systems so quickly, are we upgrading our wetware, software, hardware, but what about the stuff in our heads? What about the stuff in the user's heads, specifically? Because these people are out in the field, and if you look at any security attack, just about every one of them involves these people. So what are we doing to upgrade them? And I've seen a couple things. One is, in one case, we, we don't. We look at them as, as stupid, right? Oh, those users, they burned me. Like, they, they didn't use the system right, or they allowed that vulnerability to happen. Uh, no, like, keep them out of the system. We not only can we not upgrade them, we think we just need a new model. Right, yeah. Right? Wait, can we get them out entirely? Um, and then maybe further along, you've got an idea of, well, maybe, maybe they need to know something, so let's give them some awareness. But awareness, it's a good word, but it's not an end. It's a means to an end. So is there something more? Is there something more? And that's the space that we got to journey in and play in a little bit. And so uh, Arizona Public Service had a problem with upgrading the wetware of their people, and that was really the beginning of, of our story. So let's start there wanted to share with you that, that problem that we were facing so we could talk about how we had took an approach to upgrade that wetware. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, we found ourselves in a place where we were facing new NERC regulations. For those of you not part of the energy sector, it's cybersecurity regulation focused on the grid. And like many companies, we were looking at very significant changes. My role was to secure a number of power plants, dozens of high voltage substations, and multiple control centers, both from a physical security standpoint as well as an electronic security standpoint. 
technologically speaking, it was a very short period of time. It was a tremendous amount of work, but all of that work made sense to us. The piece that was going to be so hard for us is that we needed to introduce 2,000 people to security for the very first time. And certainly there's a few folks in the control center, in the IT, in the OT world that absolutely knew what we were doing, but the largest number of our employees had no idea. Security had never been part of their lexicon for 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years. So we knew that that was gonna be one of our greatest challenges. We set about to do all of the cool technological things, and at the same time we said, all right, let's not forget about the wetware, let's not forget about the people. We have all these things, this content, this information. We need to get this to a group of people with varying levels of technological understanding from absolute zero power plants in the middle of nowhere to fairly savvy although that's the minority. And then the space in between, what we had in that space in between was natural disengagement. Why? Okay, first of all, security is a fairly obscure term to a lot of boots on the ground folks. And second of all, we're not just talking security, we're talking compliance, and everybody hates that word. I hate that word, and it's part of my role. Compliance, just there's just this dread. Not only are we going to try to protect against hackers, if you screw that up and you don't do the paperwork right, now you're fined millions of dollars and there was actually no damage done. So this level of disengagement that, that was already there, we recognize it was there, but we've been training for a long time. So I wanna share with you what we were doing from a training perspective. This is what I like to call a multi-purpose training platform. This particular binder is full of numerous quality processes and procedures to tell you how to do important things like patch mission critical systems, vulnerability assessments, um, background checks, things that we should be doing good from a security standpoint. And again, multi-purpose, we also regularly use it to hold up a projector in a conference room. That exact binder's been there for five years without moving. So not only do we provide this as a wonderful training guide, we also, but wait, there's more, give you an amazing PowerPoint presentation, 40 or 50 of the most scintillating slides you have ever read, pillow included, bullet after bullet after boring bullet. And at the end, because this is important, we're going to quiz you. 10 really important questions that will assure us you are now fully prepared to defend our most critical of critical infrastructure. So is this what your people looked like after this kind of training? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit, okay. yeah. Um, except for there's probably one on the ground somewhere okay. there that, right. that might be missing. Yeah. Okay, so how do you know that? We essentially know what the engagement looked like for this training. Okay. So I'd like to share our engagement numbers with you. When we're talking about engagement, uh, the Kirkpatrick model of engagement tells us that at the bottom level, we have a level called disengaged. Disengage actually implies active. I am actively trying to get away from you. This actually happens to me in the elevator at work, by the way, people know what I do, and they actually sometimes leave when they see me. Yeah. Active disengagement. I've opened the training on my computer. I have moved it to my second, third, fourth, or eighth screen, depending on if you work in operations or not. I have minimized it, and it is gonna run over there. And when I am all done, <coughs> I will click, yep, I'm trained, and I will move on. That is an active level of disengagement. I have tried to not participate. Has anybody in ever training. done that? That's, I've done that. I've totally done that. One third of our workforce is essentially at this level of active disengagement. So these are people who have found actual motivation in avoiding training. It's pretty phenomenal if only we could turn that to something else. Let's go to the next level, not engaged. So not engaged seems like it's the same thing, but it's not, it's a bit more passive. Not engaged is I've opened the PowerPoint, I know there's 10 questions at the end, I'm gonna click so fast through this PowerPoint, you have never seen anybody click this fast. I will pick up the smallest amount of information that is necessary, and I will take that test, bam, and I will get back to whatever it was I was doing. Almost two thirds. Well, who does that leave? It leaves my favorite people, the 4% who are engaged, the people who have opened the PowerPoint and said, boy, security looks like an important thing. I'm going to sit here and learn something valuable. I love these guys, and I'm going into battle with 4% of my workforce. 60% of the folks don't know we're at war, and 36% of them have deserted. 
This is not Great Oz, you guys. This is where Chris and I came together. We said, this traditional way of training is not working for us. We've got to do something different. We need a new solution. Yeah, so this is the space Metamythic likes to work in. And I can describe how it works, but I think it might be easier if you describe it for me. So let's get ready to, to, say, to say things, OK? Let's get ready to interact. I know it's your favorite part. OK, call out. First person, just call out as soon as you know what I'm talking about, OK? I'm going to describe something. OK, current TV show on w two parties. On one side, people with shotguns and machetes. On the other side, the walkers. Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Wow, that was Holy. <laughs> wow, how did you know that? OK, I didn't even give you all the facts. So let's, go, let's, let's just go back a little bit more in time. So let's go back maybe 10 years. Uh, there's a, it's a book series, it's a movie series, it's a boy with round glasses. Hey, oh, I haven't even gotten all my facts. Okay, good job. Okay, let's go a long let's go time way ago. Back. Yeah, way back, like 30 years. Long time ago in a movie theater far, far away, there is a, there is a boy and a father who has a breathing problem. What is his... <gasps> okay, well, let's, let's make it harder. Who's, what's the father's name? Oh my gosh, you guys are so good. I mean, that was a long time ago. So what's the secret here, right? These are facts. And if you think about it, these are, these are random facts that we're remembering. If you think about it, there's, there's a clue in storytelling. Because we just had the holidays. Did you sit around your table and did you say, oh, Lisa, we, uh, I guess you got off the, uh, the airplane. I drove here at uh, you know, a good 45.6 miles per hour. As did this I. turkey is a fantastic 127 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you want me to convert that to Celsius? Yes, for you? please. Yes. Okay, that's not how we talk to each other, right? But we put that stuff in our PowerPoints, and we put that stuff in our bullet points, and we, we expect people to engage. What do we do around the table? We tell stories. What have we been doing for 500 years with fables? We're telling fictional stories that teach children truths. Go back 2,000 years. Then. If you've been to Sunday school, The Good Samaritan, do you know that story? It's a fictional story that teaches the truth. We could keep going back, and there's this common thread. So it's a, it's a new problem that you had, but it's an old solution. So the thing, though, that we do is we tweak it just a little bit. So instead of the entire story being fiction, we apply fiction to reality. And so where does the reality come in? And that's the heroes of the story. So our heroes are these people, OK? It's the people out using these systems. And you might say, well, what, what is our role as security professionals? It's a very important role. It's the sage, OK? You all are the people who have the 10,000 plus hours of expertise that these people will not ever have. You are the ones out fighting the battles, who have had the battle scars. But there's not enough of you, OK? You can't stand over the shoulders of every single person out there. You need more people walking by your side. They don't need the same skill level as you, but they need some skill level so they can understand and walk with you. That's these people. And Star Wars makes a great metaphor, right? Think of yourself as Obi-Wan Kenobi or Yoda or your favorite Jedi master. And think of these people as Luke Skywalker, because they start out a little bit whiny and a little bit reluctant. <laughs> But you know what? If you can call them to a higher purpose, they can really do some amazing things. And so that's the fundamental. We make the learner the hero of the story. Every hero needs enemies, and dun, we dun, have dun. them. Yeah, don't get scared. OK, so there's a lot of enemies out there, from script kiddies to nation states. So instead of trying to pick and choose, we use fiction. So this lady looks like one of your employees, will tailgate into your physical security perimeters, your, where you have your protected assets, uh, and then do damage. Or this robot character uh, is really good at attacking physical defenses. And then everybody knows the flash drive. And this one actually is equipped with legs, will walk up to your employees, uh, issue siren calls, and get them to pick it up and plug it in, OK? These are just a few of the characters, but the idea is that every hero needs to learn by building their skills against characters, OK? So what do we call that? Applied fiction. We take truth, story, we make the learner the hero of that story, teach them why things are important, show them the respect of teaching them why, and then suddenly magic happens. The problem is, the way we did this in the past at Metamythic was instructor-led training, theatrical-type experiences where people were involved physically around a table and learning and being involved in acting and things like that. That was going to be a problem for APS. So can, can you talk about that? Absolutely. If you think over the best training you've ever had, it likely had three elements. There was probably an instructor in the room with you imparting some kind of wisdom and knowledge on you, also giving you feedback, helping you, guiding you 
correct answers, you get positive reinforcement. Incorrect answers, you get reasoning why. An instructor is a huge part of our learning, which is why electronic learning doesn't typically work very well. The second thing that you had is probably an immersive learning environment. You were brought fully into the learning in that space. And the third thing you likely had was some form of simulation. It could literally be a simulator. It could be a whiteboard. It, it could have been simply a tabletop exercise, but something that allowed you real world application. Those are the three things that were the keys, uh, having been a former trainer myself, that I was extremely worried about when we talked about online training because my experience was a terrible PowerPoint. And we needed to do online learning because you had so many distributed locations and people to train throughout yes. the year. We couldn't do the theatrical type. No, we're having thousands of square miles and of course new, new employees come on all the time. It was impossible. So that's how we landed on the electronic piece. We're moving now into the the best part of this, where you guys get to actually see pieces of the training. So as we move into that, I want you to keep those three things in mind. Look how we solved those three problems as you go through this. The instructor, the immersive experience, and that simulation piece. Welcome to WarCore. The system is ready for login. I will now access your records. Your user has not logged in before. You'll be quarantined until your authorization records are confirmed. I'll send for the WarCore authority now. Alerting Stanley. I was laying in my desk, ready for a boring training, and I went, WarCore? Bam, I'm awake. So that first moment of immersion has just happened because everybody's extremely confused. They wonder if they've clicked on the wrong training and, and, and if somebody from IT is gonna come after them now. We've been trained to disengage with training, so we needed to shock people into paying attention so they didn't immediately disconnect us. So where do we go from here? Now we need to really bring them into the training, each individual. That's the next piece. So suddenly I see on the screen my name my power company, something that says recruit and a clearance level. That means absolutely nothing to me, but color me intrigued, I'm in. Mm. But we want to continue to really engage and interact with them. So the next step is to engage them further by allowing them to personalize this training. We'll, take, we'll give them a call sign. The, the training can give them a call sign for them, or it would allow them to type in their own, their favorite nickname. This happens to be an operator, and all of his buddies call him the Chud. So the Chud gets his own call sign and becomes a piece of the, the story. Right, because this is all about identity, right? If we're going to have people take on the mantle of hero, and we start to adopt the term defender now, and if they're going to take on that identity, they need to make they need to make choices. They need to make decisions. They need to apply themselves into the training. And that lets them take on that identity. And at this point, most of the people are like, maybe I won't turn my speakers off. Hmm. I'm kind of interested. Right. So we've, we've brought them in, and they now feel a piece of it. They still don't quite know what recruit means, but they have an idea. Mm -hmm. All right, so we get them on their journey. They are, they are funneled into the system, and then we load the simulator. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load the simulator and give you a guided tour of how it works. The simulator is loaded. Track your progress through the episode here. Now we just need a facility. Okay, so the little round guy who was talking to us, that goes back to that instructor-led training roots that we have and the values that we've seen with good training. Uh, so many times, I, I'm sure all of you have done this, you've gone through training and you're, you're listening to somebody repeat the slide deck to you if there's any kind of audio. This is Stanley. He has a personality. He's a character. He's an artificial intelligence. He follows us through the training, and he encourages, he inspires, he challenges us, and he teaches us along the way. He becomes that sage, that extension of you know, our security people here in the, in the simulator. Once we have the simulator loaded, the first choice people get is a facility to defend, a critical infrastructure. Let's pick either a substation. The simulator is loaded a plant or a uh, control center. This was so important to us. My grandfather, twice removed, was a circuit breaker. I dated a boiler once. She was hot. Excellent choice, cadet. This is one fine facility. So brain psychology teaches us that if we engage emotion at the same time that we're learning, we're far more likely to remember and recall what we learned. And so 
one of those emotions that we want to take advantage of is humor. And so I heard some, some laughs out there. Uh, we have humor through this, uh, technical humor, geek humor, but we also have some, a lot of blue collar humor. It's all been approved by your HR department. Yeah. Snuck a few things in there. Um, but the idea is that if you are laughing and smiling, those are positive emotions. They will help you remember. So we have a facility. We've made our first choice. Now we're going to inspect the assets of that facility. And then we're going to add defenders to the facility, people who are in that facility that we're going to learn about and learn from. Now, touching on a couple points here. One is, if I'm an operator, I may have, may, might, I may have never been inside of a data center. And so the nice thing about a virtual simulator is I can actually see what a data center looks like. I can explore the assets that people are protecting that I'm also responsible by extension for protecting as well. Uh, suddenly, things that we may have taught people as facts just for you, we now see how we all connect together to sustain security for our organization. And so I'm going to go ahead and add some of the defenders. The other interesting thing about, def about adding characters to the facility is that people don't connect. What HQ building, you ask? This one. All right, Stanley, thank you. All right, so people don't connect necessarily with physical things. Some engineers will, right? But most people connect with other people. So putting these characters in gives people a connection point with what they're learning. And if you think that's kind of silly, we've actually had examples where people have come back and said they they actually Absolutely. remembered the characters. They remembered the names of the characters and, and I think especially appreciated things like we have the HR department there, we have management, we have control rooms, we have IT, mm. and people start to see that we actually all have a role, which I don't think any of them connected to before. Right. So now the attack. What does an attack look like? All right, so this is a kettlehead. Anytime we introduce an enemy character, we do what we call a slam down screen. And that's to let our heroes learn about who they're, who they're protecting their facility from. When the facility is first loaded, it has no defenses installed. And so the robots, whenever they teach a new attack, they do lots of damage to the facility. And so we'll see what happens here. Ready yourselves. This is one of the advanced force robots. Everyone run, there's no lock on the door. <laughs> Why must the universe punish the good? Simulator pause. All right, so that robot, there was no physical access controls. The robot just walked in and damaged the facility. OK, what are we going to do about this? Well, let's teach people about the defenses. And so we'll teach them what, what are the defenses that, that, that we use. And so somebody who may have badged in every day for the past 20 years actually has a why now. Why is that, why is that badging in process important? Why does that system even exist? Why is it important not to let people tailgate me in? What is my role in that? So we've got three systems we can install. We've got a badge reader, the HAL 9000 eye scanner, and a Kraken body shape sensor. Uh, latest technology. Uh, don't tell anybody about it yet. Still top secret DOD stuff. OK, I need a vote. Uh, just call out if you want the badge scanner. Nobody. <laughs> OK, how about the I HAL 9000? I don't know what they're going to vote for. Couple HAL 9000s. All right, OK, let's try the Kraken. Yeah. OK. Uh, the Kraken's so cool. It, yeah, the Kraken, yeah. Robots and water, the good mix. So this is a identification system and an alerting system. Access denied. Bot. Uh-oh. Looks like the robots are trying again. Alerted and defended. Okay. Rust in peace, robots. So show the attack, teach the defense, let the person customize their facility. So we, we roll through these fairly frequently. We have about 12 attacks that we teach. I'll show you two more examples. One is the classic USB drive. fooled by that. Flash bot.
robots have taken control of the operator console and are overloading our transmission lines. Simulator pause. All right, so two physical attacks. Maybe those seem easy, but the nice thing about a simulator is you can actually teach abstract things, like how does a firewall work? Something I can't do. I can't just crack off the cover of a firewall and say, hey, look at the packets in there. Uh, so let's see how we teach firewall attacks with, uh, or electronic attacks in a way that respects our technical people, raises them up, but also is accessible to everybody. When computers communicate with each other, they send messages in small packets called, uh, well, uh, they're called packets, right? Um, here's a packet now. Before, this packet would have gone straight through to our servers. Papers, please. Hello, I'm from the corporate reporting server, and I'm headed to the control server. Even if the communication is authorized, the intrusion prevention system will check the contents of the packet. Open up. Uh, what are you hiding? No contraband. Uh, proceed. That was an approved packet. All right, so that's the good path. Let's see what an attack looks like. Ah, here's a packet sent by a robot hacker. Papers, please. Um, well, uh, you see, I'm from the internet, and I kind of want to communicate with, uh, your control system. That's okay with you. These papers are phony. I must destroy you now. Have a nice day. Help me! Help me! Help! He wasn't on the list. The robot's trying again. Some attacks can trick the firewall into letting a packet through. Papers, please. Howdy, you can trust me. I'm from the corporate archival server. Go into the control system. He's not through yet. Give the secrets to me. What are you hiding? Virus bot. Hey! Oh, that's smart! Oh! That's, ow! Oh! Terminated. Nice job, Firewall. And that ends the chapter. It's duty time. So now we have accessible training for every level of employee that has to deal with the system so they understand why. Each chapter covers a topic, and then at the end of the chapter, we get into a testing side. You want to talk about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So no more 10-question quiz at the end. We now actually gauge learning all the way through in in 40-plus moments of learning where they accumulate points as you go, which helps you to level up to the next level. So. There's interesting and uh, terrible answers. There's feedback when you get an answer correct. You get points after each one of these. And instead of just 10 questions, I now have data behind each one of these to see if employees in a certain employee group or in a certain location might need reinforcement on some specific concepts that are perhaps more foreign to that group than another group. This piece of it has been very significant for us. We also chose to not have a passing score, a certain threshold you had to cross to measure learning, because we were getting the data that we needed to reinforce ongoing for the long term that training. So we've taken a fear factor away from people, which to me is actually very important. They're no longer afraid of this training. They can simply engage in it. This screen is what you ended up with at the end of each one of these chapters. Fun fact at the bottom, you get to see every place that you have a choice. What did your colleagues choose? How many chose a power plant or a control center or the Kraken sensor or the HAL eye scanner? Most people chose the Kraken. The Kraken is incredibly popular, especially in IT circles. Yeah. Not as much maybe in the power plant circle, but certainly in IT. So let's go back to our engagement. 1,800 people have taken this training now, and I want to share with you our engagement numbers. I, uh, this was a pretty radical concept. I sort of was hoping that if I could hit 40% engagement, I wouldn't be fired. That was my goal, I, lofty goal. Disengaged numbers were at 4%. I swapped my engaged and my engaged, disengaged, 4%. Essentially, 5% of people are going to hate every, absolutely everything you do. Engaged, not engaged, at 13%. Here's the number that matters. Engaged. 83% of our employees engaged. We were blown out of the water by that statistic. Not only did they think that they understood the training, it was the best training that they'd actually ever taken for many so, of them. So they were interested in it. Did they take on that identity? Absolutely. It became who they are. I got text messages and phone calls. Right? People regularly say to me, I'm a defender. They've joined our rebellion. I actually got this text message from a senior executive. It's been an incredible experience for our employees. So wrapping this up, what do the robots not want you to remember? Three things. Your systems include your people. 
upgrade them to. It is possible. And it's possible, especially if you use what is innately human to us, story and blend fiction in to fill in the gaps. And then finally, you are the sage, your people are the heroes. So if you walk out of this theater with those three concepts, then we would welcome you to the Learning Rebellion with open arms or fist bumps or whatever's natural to you. I'll leave you with one thing. Uh, if you're still not persuaded or if you want to see more, join the rebellion. Uh, on your way out, uh, one of our colleagues is going to be passing out these access cards. Um, we've made this tra training available online to try it out, to go through it, see how it works, see all 12 attacks and defenses, and, and become a defender yourself. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Join us. Thank you.